Well, uh, good evening and a uh, warm welcome and uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I hope you are keeping warm uh, as it is growing chilly and more chilly every day. Um, so today we, con we, are, we are having our midweek devotion and uh, we're going to read from Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 to 9 as a follow-up to our message and the passages that we read uh, last week uh, celebrating Father's Day. Uh, and so we saw uh, last week uh, the topic was passing on the heritage of faith, a father's legacy. And so we exhorted, challenged one another to, to con um, pass on the baton of faith uh, to our children starting in the home. And so I will read that command again and then we will look at a biblical example of somebody who, in fact two biblical examples of people who... Um, who passed on the baton of faith. One is a biblical character in the name of Abraham, but we also see how the Lord Jesus Christ did that with his uh, disciples. And so in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 9, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So they, it establishes the uh, monotheistic God uh, that, um, that we worship, one God, though he is found in three persons, but he is one God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts, impress them on your children, talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. And this is an instruction that is being given to all Israel by Moses as he receives instruction from God. That is, they go into the promised land. They need to teach their children. But first of all, before they actually teach, there is that declaration, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. A declaration of who God is. And then after that, we see a responsibility that was given to each individual, which is also a responsibility we all have is the responsibility for each individual to love God totally, wholesomely, to love God with all our hearts, to love God with all our mind, soul, and strength. And so even fathers, they have a responsibility, first for their own faith. There, has been, there is um, a talk about fathers who send their children to church, but they actually are not part of the church family. They are not believers, but they want their children to be believers. So they send them to church but they remain at home, or actually drive them into the car park and then drive off, come back when church is over. So you call me when church is over. This is saying to these fathers, impart that which you already have. You have a responsibility to your own spiritual walk with the Lord. And then after that, then you then have these commandments which are written on your heart, now passing them on to your children. So the first responsibility is to our own salvation, it is to our own sanctification. We need to be saved, but also to be sanctified, to be set apart daily, to be more Christ-like daily, each day being more like Christ. Then when we have done that, it would mean all the other command, the other command that follows will now come into place. Impress these, these truths which would have changed you from inside out. Impress them on your, on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and even when you uh, wake up. And this just means pass it, pass the legacy of the faith all the time. It is all the time. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. I mean, put them, expose them, expose them to everyone who sees you. Sorry about the noise. Just these big cars that people drive on, uh, um, just next to the church. But... I was trying to make the point that, you know, impre um, having them on, on, your, on your fingertips, it means you, they are exposed. They are on your forehead, they are exposed. People can see and read and see your life. And we said that there are two ways in which we can pass on the heritage of faith to proceeding generations. And it is first in word and then in deed. It is in word that fathers should tell their children the gospel and persuade them to believe. It is not about head knowledge, but it is to convince them and persuade them to believe that message, but also to do it indeed. Indeed means we need to show our children a life 
transformed by the gospel message which we are sharing to our children. We should say, we should not say do as I say to you, but also as you see from me. So I tell them, but I also have to show them so that they do as I am doing. Follow me as I follow Christ, Paul says. And so there is uh, that part of uh, our, our passing on uh, the baton is we have to actively share the gospel, but we also should show the gospel by modeling, by modeling that faith uh, in our children. And the biblical example we have, sorry, before I go to the biblical example, uh, if you would like to have your children have a good marriage in their lives, teach them about it, but also show them in your own marriage what a, mar a, a happy marriage is like. If you would want them to be good business, businessmen, teach them about business ethics and principles, but also show them those ethics. Be an honest living. Talk about it, but leave it out. Truthfulness, teach them, but also leave it out. Hard work, teach them, but exhibit it to them so that you model it. And so as we turn to our biblical example, we will see the main Abraham, when God called him and said, leave the heir of the Chaldeans and go to a land that I will show you. The first thing he did is he obeyed. And so already to his family, though at that point he didn't have his biological children, he already had children under his care like Lot, who he goes with his brother's son, his nephew. He showed his family and modeled his family obedience and trust to God. He trusted God and we are even told that he trusted God and it was accounted for him for righteousness. So he's modeling that to his family. As he's teaching it, but he's also modeling it. He's doing it. He modeled faithfulness. Faithful witness. He witnessed to them what faithfulness is. We see him praying for his family and blessing his family. Again, it's, he's modeling that to his family. Teaching and training. Abraham taught his children about God's ways and trained them to follow him. So lessons we can learn is we need to pass on the heritage of faith to the next generation. We need to trust and obey God even when it's difficult so that we model that in our children. We need to be a faithful witness to our families and others. We need to pray and bless our children as a way of passing on the legacy. We need to teach and train them in the ways of the Lord as we also model it so that they see it. So Abraham's example shows us that passing on the heritage of faith requires intentional effort. It, need, it requires trust and it requires obedience. By following his example, we can pass on a strong faith, faith legacy to our children and our grandchildren. When we look at the Lord Jesus Christ, when he chose the twelve and he was walking with them, he was almost a father figure to them. And with that group of disciples, he taught them. He uses many way, different ways of teaching. He taught them with parables. He taught them with um, life examples. He, he gave them hard teachings. He gave them some very easy to understand teachings, day-to-day -day examples of life. And in one of his teachings, he says, let the one of them who would like to be the greatest of them all be a servant of all. And after he had done that by way of words in Mark chapter 9, verse 35, later when we read the Gospel of John and in chapter, um, in chapter 13, we see him modeling that humility because as he said, you want to be great, be a servant of all. And he modeled it when he washed his disciples' feet and even tells them, I've left you an example. So we see here that the aspect of telling he who wants to be great among you must be the servant of all. And then the aspect of modeling, I will wash these disciples' feet, your disciples, your feet. And after that, I have left you an example to follow. So when Peter and John and the other disciples would then serve others, serve and leadership, which was being taught and modeled, they would, they would say, we have heard him teach us about servant leadership. We have seen him in action doing servant leadership. So fathers, we have an encouragement here, parents, we have an encouragement here from biblical characters. But also we have a command to pass on the legacy of faith. And in it, we have propagation of the faith, but also preservation. Let's understand that as we are modeling them, as we are teaching them, we are propagating as they will share with the coming generations. But also we are preserving the faith within our children so that they can propagate it 
in both propagation and preservation come together when we obey God's command to pass on the legacy, the legacy of faith uh, to our children. How have you been doing? How are you faring in passing on the legacy of faith? Are you speaking about the faith in your home? Are you teaching your children about this faith? Are you modeling it? When they look at you, they say, I was taught seven leadership from my father. I've seen him doing it. I've been taught hard work by my parents. I've seen them at work doing it. I've been taught what marriage is about and what a, marriage, a happy marriage looks like, and I've seen it in my own family. So we have a challenge here, fathers and parents, to pass on the legacy of faith to our children. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for enlisting us to be in mission with you, to propagate the faith. As you work to draw people to yourself, you ask us to tell the gospel message, to speak. For you say in your word, how can they believe on him who they have not heard? And you have given us the responsibility as fathers and parents to raise our children in the training and admonition of the Lord. So Lord, help us not to be quiet. Rebuke us when we are quiet. Lord, help us to live out that faith and model it for our children. Rebuke us where we have been lax to live it out. And Lord, we give you thanks and honor and all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Uh, once again, keep warm uh, until we meet again. Bye-bye for now.